Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another night with Mrs. Taylor. So welcome to Mrs. Taylor's math class. Um, tonight we will be working on the FTCE GK Math Competency 3. We have about just a couple of problems we're going to do. Um, we won't be before you long at all, not at all. But we want to come on tonight and um, just give you some sample questions from Competency 3. Um, this competency is um, full of equations and inequalities and um, just stuff of that nature. So if you're good with equations and inequalities, you're going to like this competency. Uh, we're not going to go over, um, have examples of all of the different strands um, in competency three, but we're just going to hit um, just a few of the strands and they will be out of your way. So there are seven different strands that are, you are going to be tested on in competency three. Um, the first one, determine whether two algebraic expressions are equivalent by applying properties of operations or equality. Number two, identify an algebraic expression, equation, or inequality that models a real-world situation. Number three, solve equations and inequalities, for example, linear, quadratic, graphically, or algebraically. For number four, determine and solve equations or inequalities graphically or algebraically in real-world problems. Number five, graph and interpret a linear equation in real-world problems. Um, for examples, use data to plot points, explain slope and y-intercept, determine additional solutions. Um, number six, identify relations that satisfy the definition of a function. And lastly, number seven, compare the slopes of two linear functions represented algebraically and graphically. So, this your algebra class, that's all it is, it's an algebra class. Now, this weekend, I will be running Competency 3 study session um, Saturday and Sunday at 1 o'clock on both um, days. So, from 1 to 3, if you are interested in joining the study session, um, please go to my website and sign up. It is a fee. Um, you will have to pay in advance um, to secure your seat for the um, study session. All study sessions are held virtually. So, head on over to Mrs. Taylor's.com. No, Mrs. Taylor's Math Class.com, and you will find the registration over there. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first question, this is probably simpler than what they will actually test you on, but this gives you an idea what um, you will see. So it's um, determine whether two algebraic expressions are equivalent by prime, applying properties of operations or equality. Now, when you're taking the GK math test, of course, you're going to have um, multiple choices, uh, four choices. Um, you have to be able to, they're going to give you an expression. You got to be able to match the expression to whatever the, are in your um, answer choices. So here I'm just going to show you how to rewrite this current expression um, so you can see how it would look um, differently. So, um, with the first one, you have 3 over 2w plus 5 over 3w. With all fractions, when you're adding or subtracting, you have to find a common denominator. So, the common denominator here, let's continue to use blue. The common denominator needs to be a combination of what you currently see. Um, in your denominators. So as you can see, there's a 2w here, there's a 3w here. They both have w, so that's one thing. So they're going to include the w. We need to include the 2. We need to include the 3. Okay? So your common denominator is really going to be 6w. 
Now look at both of your denominators. What is each one missing? So from this denominator here, let's erase this line, we're missing the three. So we need to multiply both the top, which is your numerator, and your denominator by the number three. See, now it matches, two W three. 2w3, just like down here. Now, from your other fraction, 5 over 3w, it's missing a 2. So you multiply both your denominator and your numerator by the number 2 because that is what is missing from its denominator. So now that you have what it should be, let's rewrite our fractions. So now we're working with 9 over 6w plus 10 over 6w. So now we have matching denominators, and so all we're going to do is add our fractions. So this is going to be 19 over 6w. Okay, now for the next one, we have 2 over 3y minus five, 1 over 5y. Again, we have to find a common denominator, so I'm just going to um, put CD. And we have a 3, a Y, and a 5. Those are the three things I see. Now, what is each one missing? So from the first denominator, I'm missing a 5, so I'm going to multiply both my numerator and my denominator by 5. From the second fraction, I'm missing a 3 in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply both the numerator and my denominator by the number 3. So now let's rewrite this as 10 over 15y minus 3 over 15y. So now that was simplified to 7 over 15y. Now this is something that you need help on and you would like more practice with this, and you would like more practice with a teacher, a tutor, someone who is knowledgeable about this subject, you should join the study session this weekend. Head over to my website, mrstaylorsmathclass.com, and you can register over there. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now, for this topic, um, solve equations and inequalities, graphically or algebraically, sometimes they may give you a problem where you have to find someone else's error in their um, equation. So, of course, that means that you have to have knowledge on how to solve an equation. So, let's look at what we're given. The given equation is 8 over 3 is equal to 3 times the sum of C and 5 thirds. So the first step is going to be, looks like what they did is they tried to do the distributive property. That was That is what it looks like they tried to do. And the reason why I say they tried to do it because it's not done correctly. If you're going to distribute the 3, you have to multiply it by the C, which they did, check, and multiply it by the 5 thirds. Well, that's not correct because if you multiply 3 by 5 thirds, you, still, you should not still have a 5 thirds. So what you should have is 3 times 5 thirds. Of course, you can rewrite this over 1. And you get 15 over 3, which is really equal to 5. So this shouldn't be 5 thirds here. It really should be a 5. So where is the error in this particular problem? is in step one. So that would be something that you have to do on the test. So you have to know how to solve an equation in order to be able to find the error message. Okay? Let's go to another problem. So for this problem, I put two different competencies here. Um, you have to know how to graph and interpret the linear equation in a real world problem. And then it says here, um, explain um, slope and y-intercept. That's why I picked this. And then you also need to compare the slopes of two linear functions um, represented algebraically and graphically. So it's kind of two things happening here. So it says match the following equations to the lines 
on the given graph. So here's our graph over here. We have two lines. One line is blue, one line is black. So we need to figure out, well, which equation goes with which line. So let's start um, uh, working this out. Now, slope and y-intercept. Let's We need to write each equation in slope intercept form. So as of right now, the equations are in standard form. Standard form, ax plus by is equal to c. We need to rewrite these equations in slope intercept form. which is y equals mx plus b. So essentially, we are solving for the variable y. So for the first equation, it's probably kind of small, but I think you can see it. We are going to, let's rewrite it. So it's 13x plus 5y is equal to negative 10. I'm going to subtract 13x from both sides of my equation get a zero pair here. I have 5y is equal to negative 13x minus 10. And I'm writing like the, the writing it like this on purpose to keep the same format of mx plus b on the right hand side of my equation. Now I'm going to divide all three terms by 5. And over here I get y is equal to negative 13 over 5x minus 2. Okay, so now let's do the other equation. So here we have negative x plus 4y is equal to negative 20. I'm going to add x to both sides of my equation. I get my zero pair on the left hand side. I'm left with 4y is equal to x minus 20 divide all three terms by 4 and y is equal to 1 fourth x minus 5. Now at this point you have to know what you're looking at. The value of b is your y-intercept. The y-intercept means where does the graph cross the y-axis and it's labeled y up here. So of course, there are no numbers on here, but this is the y-intercept for the yellow um, equation is negative 5. So the y-intercept is negative 5. For the green equation, the y-intercept is negative 2. So I don't even have to look at the slopes to tell which graph is which, okay? We already know that in the middle of my graph, this is going to be 0, 0, okay? Up here are my positive numbers. Down here are my negative numbers, okay? So if I had to guess which graph, which graph is which, I would say that the negative 2 is here, and this one is the negative 5, okay? So that's how I would match up my graphs. So if I had to highlight stuff, well, let's just do it like this. The blue graph goes with um, the white intercept that has the uh, negative 2. So this would be the blue graph. Okay. This equation here. Equation 1. So we can label this number 1. And then the yellow graph or the it's the black graph. That's a black line. This would be equation number two because it has a y-intercept of negative five. Okay, so this would be the black graph. All right, so if you need help with this kind of stuff, come see me. Meet me at the study session. Mrs. Taylor's math class .com. You go register and you do have to pay in advance to secure your seat. Okay. All right. I think this is the last question I have for this evening. So you are responsible for being able to solve inequalities. Um, 
They could be compound. They could be um, just regular single um, inequalities. This is ha this happens to be a compound inequality. So you can solve this uh, all at once. You don't have to separate it because of the way it's written. So the first thing I'm going to do, first off, it says negative 5 is less than or equal to 3 minus 2x um, less than 11. So I need to subtract both sides. Subtract 3 from both sides. So over here and over here. I get the 0 pair in the middle. So I'm left with negative 8 is less than or equal to negative 2x less than x. Then I'm going to divide everything by negative 2. Now with the inequality, anytime you are dividing or multiplying by a negative number, you have to switch the direction of the inequality. So this is going to be 4 greater than or equal to x greater than negative 4. So I could rewrite this so I could have it in order. This would be negative 4 is less than x less than or equal to 4. Now because you're going to be working with multiple choice um, on your test, they won't ask you to actually tell them this particular part. What you have to answer is which value is in could be a solution for this um, inequality. So if they gave you three, four choices: A, B, C, and D. They say, well, can negative five be in there? Could we have 6? Could we have 18? Could we have negative 1? So you have to figure out well, which one of these would go in between negative 4 and 4. So you know negative 5 doesn't go in between there. You know 6 is too big. Um, 18 is way too big. Negative 1, just right. It's somewhere in between negative 4 and 4. So that's the type of question you would have to answer on that on the FTCE test reg uh, regarding inequality. So if you need help and you know you need help, come see me, all right? Don't waste your money trying to take that test over and over again if you are if you know you got skills that you are deficient in, come see Mrs. Taylor so that we can help you Find where you need help, work on that skill so that when you go into the test, you are ready, you are confident, and that'd be the last time you take it. Because as soon as you hit submit, you want to see pass. That's what you want to see. So, that is all I have for this evening. Um, again, this is Mrs. Taylor from Mrs. Taylor's Math Class. Um, this weekend, we are running the study session for Competency 3 for the FTCEGK math. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. You will be working for two hours straight doing the math, okay? I am here to support you and to help you and to make, to get you to your score of 200 or above, all right? So that's it for this evening. Um, I will see you next week with another night of math. So, bye-bye. Ta-ta for now.